This case demonstrates that regenerative medicine is both effective and essential to any patient who, who is undergoing hair restoration surgery. In fact, if you have hair restoration surgery and you are not participating in some form of regenerative medicine, you are doing, doing yourself a disservice. And we can help you, but it is up to you to help us. And the reason is very simple. There are not enough hair follicles in the traditional safe donor area of the scalp to transplant to a degree of full coverage once a patient advances beyond a Norwood three vertex. And that is hair loss in the front half of the scalp and a small area of loss in the crown. It is also essential to begin this treatment before the hair follicles are lost. Once the hair follicles are lost, there's nothing that will bring them back. In other words, we can put fertilizer on grass and improve the, the grass, but we can put all the fertilizer we want on concrete and we're not going to grow new, new grass. For this reason, very important that you begin regenerative medicine as early in the hair loss process as possible. Regenerative medicine includes a number of different options today that were not available in the past. We've had topical minoxidil since, oh, the 1980s. Uh, we've had oral propecia since around 1997. We've had PRP since around 2006, 2007. Uh, the first reported cases of it being a benefit in the literature were around 2005 for hair. Um, we have had lice platelets since about 2016. Uh, there are other options as well today. There's amniotic membrane, there's adipocyte stromal cells, there are exosomes, and there's low-level laser therapy. All of these products are beneficial to the hair follicle. All of them stimulate the dermal papilla. It's based on a number of studies. However, some patients will respond better to one product than they will to another. Uh, we find that uh, there are different sources for the biologics. Biologics meaning off-the-shelf uh, lice platelets or, or growth factors, uh, off-the-shelf amniotic membrane, and uh, off-the-shelf exosomes. The different donor source uh, can provide better quality exosomes, amniotic membrane uh, byproducts, and also off-the-shelf platelet lysate. So in other words, uh, there are genetic predispositions of individuals, let's say, to respond better to adipocyte stromal cells, whereas another individual might respond better to, to topical finasteride. Uh, there are also different genetic ver variations between the donor source of, let's say, exosomes, amniotic membrane, and even off-the-shelf uh, mesenchymal stromal cells. Uh, so... Uh, you have to keep all of these things in mind. And what it means is you may respond extremely well to one session of exosomes from an excellent source. You may not respond as well the next time because the source of the exosome may not have as good a quality of exosome. Now, in this particular case, this is a patient with marked hair loss. I really didn't think he would respond all that well to regenerative medicine because he had so little hair. And as I said, you have to have the hair follicle in order to stimulate it. Well, it turns out he did have hair follicles. They were just in a very dormant state. They were very fine and light, and he responded extremely well to regenerative medicine. He's had everything now. He's had uh, topical finasteride, exosomes, uh, amniotic uh, stromal cells, I mean, uh, adipocyte stromal cells, and he's also had uh, low-level laser therapy, uh, as well as lice platelets from his own um, uh, platelet source. Uh, so he responded extremely well to topical finasteride. Uh, this is one of the better things that he's responded to. The question remains whether the shotgun approach where, where we, we treat the patient with everything, meaning uh, uh, adipocyte stromal cells from the patient's own adipose tissue, uh, exosomes from a biologic source, amniotic membrane, and the patient's platelet lysate along with topical finasteride and low-level laser therapy, and even microneedling uh, to get the best response. Will the shotgun therapy be superior to any individual uh, 
you know, the future really is in genetic engineering where, where we can tailor the therapy specific to the genetic profile of the patient. Uh, that's down the road, but that's where we're headed. Uh, but this is an outstanding uh, response in a patient who I otherwise would not have considered transplanting. Um, and uh, he responded so well that uh, we were able to go ahead and, and, and add, actually add some grafts in. And it's very important to recognize that uh, his six-month result was good. His uh, 10-month result was outstanding, but he continued to get better even out 15 months and beyond. This regenerative medicine does continue to stimulate the dermal papilla and does continue to improve the response in many patients. It's certainly possible that some patients may not respond to any form of regenerative medicine. Uh, there are no guarantees in medicine, but uh, you have to start looking at doing something you wish to preserve your hair because hair loss is progressive throughout the lifetime of a patient.